Homelander is one of the most terrifying villains on television right now, and watching him slowly become more and more unhinged as the boys goes on has been a horrifying yet fascinating journey. You never know what he's going to do next. Today's video is all about Homelander's most brutal moments in the first two seasons of The Boys. Be warned, we'll be talking about some pretty heavy stuff. It's Homelander, what did you expect? But we'll try to make this as safe for work as possible. What do you think is the worst, most brutal thing Homelander has ever done? Let's talk more about this narcissistic psychopath right now. You've seen this scene a hundred times in a regular superhero movie. There's a lot of people trapped in some sort of life-threatening situation and all hope seems lost. But then our heroes come in and save the day. Hooray, right? Well, the boys prove that things don't always go so well in these situations, thanks to the now infamous season 1 scene that saw Homelander and Queen Maeve rush to the aid of a hijacked airplane. Obviously, it starts out as a political move, as Madeline Stilwell wants them to rescue the plane to make superheroes look better and therefore help them get involved with the US military. Which yeah, is underhanded, but at least the innocent people get saved. Things start off okay as Homelander and Queen Maeve easily dispatch most of the terrorists, and for a moment, Homelander seems like the hero everyone thinks he is. It's all safe, you're all gonna be fine. Of course, things go horribly wrong. The last terrorist takes out the pilot, and Homelander accidentally fries the airplane's controls with his laser vision. Homelander realizes it's a lost cause and turns to leave. Queen Maeve tries to reason with him with possibilities like lifting the whole plane or carrying passengers one by one to safety. But Homelander doesn't want to try any of that. In a really brutal moment, as the passengers start to realize what Homelander is doing, he threatens to laser anyone who gets close to him. Homelander won't even save the two little girls Queen Maeve is desperate to save since now there can't be any survivors. In the end, Homelander leaves the plane and lets everyone die. What's even worse is how Homelander is even able to spin it at the end to help get Vought what they wanted. Talk about brutal. To say that the relationship between Homelander and Madeline Stilwell was creepy I think is the understatement of the year. I could talk about a haunted Victorian era doll that watches you while you sleep and that's still generally less creepy than whatever we saw unfold between Homelander and Madeline. Throughout season 1 we slowly come to realize that perhaps Madeline is Homelander's only weakness, as the powerful superhero is so traumatized by how he grew up that he would do a lot for Madeline. Though things change when Homelander learns the truth about Becca and his son. He finds out Becca got pregnant after their encounter, and the story he's told was that the baby died in childbirth. Though it's not long before Homelander realizes this was a lie and a massive cover-up took place. All this info certainly put a damper on Butcher's plan of kidnapping Madeline, strapping explosives on her, and making Homelander suffer by hurting her. Turns out, Homelander doesn't care all that much. In one of the most brutal moments from the first season finale, Homelander lasers Madeline's eyes and practically burns her face off just to end any emotional connection he might have with her. The only thing that makes this scene a little funny is how Butcher decides to blow them all up anyway. Why? Just cuz. You know how in Superman movies and comics the government is always afraid of Superman going rogue and rampaging throughout the world? And since we all know Superman is a hero, we always think the government is acting foolishly for being scared of Superman? Well, maybe their fears are a little justified. I mean, just look how easily Homelander uses his powers to go on a rampage and wipe out all the terrorists. He doesn't even break a sweat as he casually strolls through the terrorist hideout and lasers everyone in his path making them look like a bowl of pasta that you left cooking uncovered in your microwave. It's brutal because of how easily he does all of this. One quick blast of his laser eyes is enough to decimate a human body, and that's a terrifying notion. And as if this scene wasn't brutal enough already, Homelander has to go and do something even more sadistic. After blowing off an enemy's legs, he casually strolls up and with a sadistic smile, slowly crushes the guy's head with his boot. Yeah, my face looked just as shocked as those soldiers who were waiting outside. Poor, poor blind spot. All he wanted was to have a place on the 7, and there was a brief time where that looked like a reality. The slowly balding Ashley went ahead and recruited Blindspot to join the team, thinking it was a great way for them to increase their diversity. In her eyes, hiring a blind superhero made them look really good, and for a brief moment it seemed like everyone was on board, including Homelander. 
The leader of the seven seemed actually pretty excited to meet the new member that Ashley brought on and looked to be even impressed by his powers, which involved heightened senses and excellent martial arts skills. Of course, we all knew that if Homelander is acting happy, chances are someone's about to get hurt. Sorry, Blindspot. Homelander starts by asking a simple question of, since Blindspot's blind, What happens if, uh, I don't know, I do this? <laughs> leaving the poor hero crying in his own blood. Yeah, it's clear the application process to be accepted as a member of the Seven is tough. And of course, Homelander has to throw in what he really thinks about Blindspot being blind at the end, which will make you shake your head in disgust even more. What made you think I would ever allow a cripple into the Seven? Thanks to Homelander's extreme powers, he can basically do whatever he wants, and that's led him to committing some truly atrocious and brutal acts of violence. But perhaps it's even scarier when he uses his powers to make other people do things they don't want to do. It's not that Homelander is just an all-powerful god, it's also the fact that he enjoys causing pain to others. Take the underground scene in Season 2, where the boys fled into some drain pipes after ramming the Deep's whale. Huey is having a tough time keeping up, as he processes how he now knows what an inside of a whale looks like, and eventually falls behind. He sees Starlight and is about to greet her, but Starlight has to blast him with her light powers because Homelander is right behind them. Now, this easily could have been the end of Huey. Homelander could have squashed him like an ant or just lasered his face off. But instead, he wants to test Starlight's loyalty. The psychotic hero demands Starlight kill Huey in front of him just to be sure she's not a traitor. He says if she doesn't do it, then he'll kill them both. And I'll admit, guys, there was a part of me that thought Huey was going to die here, even though he's essentially the lead of the show. Of course, Butcher shows up and saves the day, but just think how much pleasure Homelander would have had watching Starlight kill Huey. This was brutal, but thankfully it ended with Huey walking away alive. We've all daydreamed from time to time, right? We might be sitting there at work or at school and suddenly find ourselves fantasizing what it would be like to win the lottery or to be a superhero or anything like that. Well, Homelander daydreams as well, only his thoughts are a lot worse. After the video comes out of him killing an innocent civilian, protests start to form around him. Homelander, thinking his charm and charisma will help smooth things over, even shows up at one of the protests led by Congresswoman Victoria Newman to help calm the crowd down. Of course, things slowly start spiraling out of control, and Homelander suddenly snaps and lasers the entire crowd in an instant, mowing through them like a hot knife through butter. It's a jaw-dropping moment. But then, of course, we snap back to reality and learn that it was all in Homelander's mind. Now, there are some who could think that this was a cheap trick. The boys TV show doesn't usually deal in what ifs or daydreams. And then pulling back to reveal that Homelander actually didn't laser the crowd seems like it was done just for a scary trailer moment. But on the other hand, I think this fake out is actually a great way to show just how close Homelander is to snapping. And it's only a matter of time before he can't control himself any longer. In a really confusing moment in Season 2, we see Homelander go to his cabin and find none other than Madeline Stillwell alive and well. Did Homelander fake her death somehow? What's happening? But as we watch the scene, we realize just how strange Madeline is acting, and then we know something's not right. Soon, we see that it's actually Doppelganger who Homelander has seemingly asked to be Madeline in front of him, so that they can continue their creepy relationship. If you didn't think the Madeline and Homelander relationship was creepy enough, this brings it to a whole new level. And this episode ends brutally. Doppelganger turns into Homelander and then tries to seduce Homelander. And for a moment, it does look like the OG Homelander might be into it. But then, in a fit of rage over the idea of not needing anyone except for himself, suddenly chokes the Homelander-looking Doppelganger and snaps his neck. Yeah, Doppelganger, there was just no way you were ever leaving that cabin alive. From the first moments of the show, we know that Homelander has a tendency to be a brutal hero. But our first true look at how brutal Homelander can be happens when he destroys the mayor of Baltimore's plane in the first episode. The unwise mayor thought it would be a good idea to blackmail Vought, letting Madeline know that he's aware of Compound V and will release it if Madeline doesn't agree to certain terms. Yeah, not the best move he could have made. The episode ends with the mayor and his family flying home on their private jet when suddenly they spot something outside. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's a homicidal maniac. As we learn later, Homelander went rogue and wanted to protect Madeline from the mayor, which leads him to use his laser vision to laser the plane and make it crash, not caring about any of the innocent people on board. This was a great first way to really show the depths of how low Homelander would stoop. 
and just how dangerous he actually is. It also established Vought as a company you shouldn't ever try to blackmail. But come on, Mayor, even I could have told you that. Homelander and Stormfront were a match made in heaven. Wait, no, that doesn't sound right. Let me try again. Homelander and Stormfront were a match made by some sort of demon or evil entity? Yeah, that makes more sense. We already knew Homelander was a psychotic, racist, narcissist, and just generally a bad dude. So of course he would find whatever he defines as love with the equally terrible Stormfront. One of their brutal couple moments, which they probably counted as a really sweet date, was when they confronted the robber together in the alleyway. Yeah, all I can really say about the scene is that in a season where head popping was all the rage, Homelander showed he was just as good at it as Victoria Newman. And then we have to watch Homelander and Stormfront kiss, amongst other things, with the guy's blood smeared over their mouths. What do you guys think? Think this was like a second date? Third date? Seems like a third date kind of thing to me. Yeah, if I was ever in an elevator with Homelander, I think I would immediately just collapse into a ball and start crying, so clearly Starlight is a much stronger person than I am. But even though Starlight is a powerful superhero and proven to have super strength, she's still no match for Homelander. In a scene where he questions Starlight's loyalty, he stops the elevator they're in and demands she explains herself, threatening to drive his hand directly into her side and start ripping out internal organs if she doesn't start telling the truth. Thankfully, Starlight is able to talk her way out of it, or else the janitor would have had quite the mess to clean up. This was a brutal moment in showing just how scary Homelander can be. What do you think the most brutal Homelander moment is? What brutal things do you think he's going to do next season? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more awesome The Boys content like this. Thanks for watching CBR. See you next time.